Welcome back to our uh, Xerox Alto restoration. Uh, today we're going to work on the monitor uh, because we cannot hook up a standard monitor on the Alto. It has a really weird refresh rate. And uh, vice versa, the monitor doesn't come up uh, unless it's driven by the right refresh rates. Uh, so we will need to uh, use a special test generator that we made for it. Uh, and finally we have to uh, reunite it with its base, it got ripped off. Um, so there's some mechanical work to do right now, it's resting on wood, which is not very good. So we sort of looked out um, at the uh, Living Computer Museum, right, the LCM. Yeah, yeah, Who's, who's your contact? Um, Keith is the contact at the Living Computer Museum in Seattle where they have a couple running altos so they have a lot of experience with the restoration. Yeah, so we got the test board here uh, and with an adapter it should plug right into the monitor and we're checking that uh, it generates the horizontal sync, the vertical sync is off the screen and some video so that uh, will save us a lot of time here. So here's our monitor uh, and it's known to overheat and you can already see it on the board um, well, otherwise it looks like all the parts are in so we are all connected with the uh, exerciser, the variac and our monitor so that's the scary part of the day I guess Tell are you on? no it's off on, no. go, go on on your side and then I, I just on Start it until it. What about you? Uh-huh. It made a little noise. Nothing different, no? Nothing. But I'm still at low, rather low voltage. I don't see the tube coming on. Yes? There's a little bit of red in the tube. But nothing on the... Okay, 110 volts. Oh, I see filament. Yeah, I see the filament, and that's about it. There's no, no nothing on the screen. <laughs> okay, it didn't blow up. Can you adjust the brightness control at the bottom? Ah, uh, oh. that would be something. Nothing there. If we put a probe near the, um... it's it's really burnt. You can tell how the margin is different color than the rest. Um, okay, well, nothing on the screen. So what is the problem now? So we kind of took the so thing they, apart so we can see the board and so for diving into the schematics. The 55 volt power supply. So we are starting to doubt our tester here that there's some miswiring um, of the sync signal. So I'm going to re-cable it a different way. Okay, so we, we rewired our tester here and see if it... Uh, doing any better with the alto. It didn't get horizontal sync the right way. Ah, much better. Ooh, that's very low. It does something. It's trying to sync at 60 hertz, but... Okay. I see nothing. But I hear something. Yes. It's like the vertical sync is... Uh, Okay, well, the vertical sync is syncing. So I, we hear the, the stuff. The, the filament is doing something because it's all glowing it's red. Lit. Yeah, glowing. If the flyby is working, we should pick it up with the probe. Where's my probe? All you gotta do is get it anywhere near it. Right. I see it. Yeah, the flyby is working. So if I put my probe here next to the transformer you can yeah, see the right, signal yeah, right so so that. so we got uh, we got horizontal deflection here so that's a good sign yeah so this is the from the flyback transformer uh -huh. so we and then it sounds like it got vertical because I hear the 60 Hertz sound of the vertical yeah uh, but we have nothing on the screen we got our first sign of life when you turn it off. Yep, there's a little dot that came through. I got it. Yeah. Okay, we have to fess up, and uh, it turns out we were actually uh, wrong and caused uh, the 
bad noise you heard in the power supply resetting by uh, changing the wiring of the tester. Uh, however, the good news is that uh, we learned through that incident that uh, horizontal and vertical deflection circuit works. So now we rewired the tester as intended. Uh, so we can test the video path. Not, not quite yet. So it seems that we finally have a little bit of life. We maximized the uh, uh, contrast, the, the gain adjustment of the video, and we have the two bands that should be generated by our tester here. But it's super dim. Uh, and so we're wondering why that is. We pulled out. Where is the cap? Yeah, seems like uh, one founder. C130. Somewhere. C130. We made the life size schematics here, the ginormous. Yeah, and I think we found a capacitor that might screw up our brightness voltage here. We have a better schematic somewhere. Well, that's okay. And this one is just a very unhappy capacitor. Um, so. Here's Let's replace this one and see if it gets better brightness. We, we definitely have a problem with the brightness control. I can turn it to maximum. C120. Nothing happens. Sometimes. Sometimes something happens. So we took the pot out and infiltrated it with uh, the natural alcohol. It was uh, full of grease and residues and it uh, seems that this resistance is now back to normal. Uh, so we'll mount it back in. So this is the best we can do right now with the the pot has been repaired so now it actually responds normally but it didn't get much brighter in the end we have to dim the lights so we suspect the tube is at the end of its life um, which wouldn't be surprising and we're going to check a few other grid voltages to make sure they are right uh, but that might be as good as we can get out of this tube Here's the tube we would need. Clinton Electronics Corporation. So if any of you have one in your drawer, let us know. So we have it all reassembled and the most difficult thing was to put it back on its uh, ball joint here. And I guess it will do for a, uh, a in a, in a dark room. Right, to get it up, at least we'll see something. Then we're, we're looking for a, a better tube, right? We'll find <laughs> one <laughs> and replace the tube or find a way to uh, get the, the current higher, you know, re reform the, the, the cathode, yeah. right? All right, that's it for today.